tell me about when you finally packed your bags and went to LA, what was that process? Did you, were you already doing visual effects stuff Mm -hmm. on your home computer, learning what you could and you just decided, all right, time to go for it. And you fly to LA and find a place to live. What, totally. what was that I, process? I was in the bus and I got to Hollywood. And I'm like, where do I go to be famous? Yeah, and, uh, it's you know the dream. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I was applying for jobs in the US when I was 14, 15. And actually the first job I ever applied for was for Ritual Games in Texas. And they, uh, they offered me the job, but I couldn't get a visa because I was so young. But I got offered a job at Team Fortress Software, which got bought by Valve Software like immediately after. So I ended up working on Half-Life, which became the biggest game in oh, yeah. 96 cool. or 97. It was just funny that I worked on the biggest game ever. I'm like, okay, my career is set. And yeah. then I ended up having like a year and a half of like no jobs whatsoever, uh, which is just funny to see that kind of that dip. And that kind of taught me a valuable lesson too, that like just because you work on some big stuff doesn't mean that you're, you know, you're set to life. You made it. Yeah. But uh, when I was, so it was kind of funny. I did that as a gag. I just kind of applied to see what would happen as like the first job I ever applied for when I felt like I was ready and actually got offers and that was really cool. But then still there was definitely a lot of rejection after that, um, oddly enough. But then when I was 19, I felt like, okay, I've got a really cool reel now. I've been in the industry for a while. And I decided to send my reel to Blizzard and Blur Studio again as a gag and six months later i got a rejection letter from blizzard it only took him 10 years later to contact me and uh, and uh ask me to run one of their departments uh hey, a long nice. time later but uh <laughs> but blur reached out it was actually tim miller uh reached out to me personally and said i love your work and do you want to come work for us and that at the time was my dream job unfortunately i still couldn't get a visa we tried uh, but the cool thing, and this, I think, was such a valuable lesson, is I stayed in contact. Most people would be like, oh, okay, I'll email them again when I got in, you know, down the line when I'm ready or something. But every three months, I would just send a, a non harassing email just showing some of my latest stuff, just yeah. stay in contact. And it meant that fast forward four years or something, when I did move to LA, it didn't mean like, who are you? Oh, yeah, I, I spoke to you one time four years ago. It was... yeah you've got the job. Like he was hiring a lot of my friends just because I recommended them. Um, we had that personal relationship and I've always tried to keep that relationship with him. And I've tried to mimic that because I feel like, you know, it's like a muscle. You've got to keep working it. Otherwise um, you let, you know, your relationships fade and yeah. both personal and professional. So that was a huge game changer. But finally with LA, the funny thing is like having my mind set on LA for so long, I think this is the theme now. Um, as a gag, um, when I was 21, I remember one afternoon I was running uh, the first ever Toyota Scion commercial, which was premiering in front of the Matrix 2 that was coming out like two weeks okay. from then. I, I sent an email to a studio that was posting saying we need someone for a show in LA. And I got a call that afternoon and they're like, can you be in LA next week? And um, I think I was turning 21 actually uh, by then. So I was turning 21 that week. So I had a party in Sydney, party in Brisbane, then I flew out to LA did three months. And the last thing I mentioned, just because I think this is valuable for everyone is when I went to LA, I did a three month stint on a job, but rather than just doing that, than going back to Australia, like the whole time I was there, I was just going to every studio, meeting people, having lunches, having dinners, just creating as many relationships as I could just because I'm like, Hey, I'm finally in the bubble where everyone else yeah. is. Yeah. Uh, don't waste the opportunity. But it meant that when it came time to leave, I had, you know, a lot of offers on the table and it meant that I went back, waited for my actual visa to go through. <clears throat> and uh, then, yeah, I moved out there uh, six months later and, yeah, you know, stayed out yeah. there for a long time. 